15 love. Is. One thing that Federer will need to do is to arrest a bit of a slide in his first serve percentages. He's been on the downhill run since round one. 63, 62, 58, down to 57 against Del Potro. 40 We knew it was going to be the case, but the way he's come out in this first game, he means business. Talked about the first serve percentages of Federer. Rafa's been very strong in that area. The lowest first serve percentage he's had, 64 against Tommy Haas in the second round. He's had it up as high as 81 against Lucas Latchko in the third round. Well, you'd expect that from Nadal with his style. He, he doesn't uh, get as many free points from the first delivery as Federer. That's the first serve. So his risk factor is a little lower. You'd expect his first serve percentage to be higher. You know, I think initially when Nadal came onto the, the circuit, players played his backhand a little bit too much. But in recent years, they've, they understand that the better way to try and attack his defence, because the backhand defence is so good, is to go hard into the forehand. And Federer tonight will hit the off forehand a lot, I think, into that uh, Nadal forehand side. Good early backhand there from Federer, stepping in. Just has the innate ability to take the ball on the rise on, on, on both balls. But that time with the backhand, beautiful timing. Took that ball early and draws the mistake. When Federer starts timing the ball like this early in the match, you get a very early impression of the way that he's going to be on the night. Please. And that would already be a bit of a worry for Nadal. Federer timing it brilliantly, sweetly. Retrieval from Nadal, he's pumped already. Roger missed his opportunity, he hit the volley, the high volley, too short. That gave Nadal the chance. This is the one he hits too short in the court, it bounces up, and Nadal can retrieve it. So great lob off that, uh, that forehand and put Roger back under the pump. So a deeper volley there would have won him the point, Roger. Lesson number one for the crowd, don't celebrate too early when Rafa's out there. He will get to balls that you don't think he's likely to.
Deuce. And why wouldn't you run around that, that second serve, serve when you have a forehand like Roger Federer? Maybe, just maybe, the best forehand we've ever seen. With the versatility, the flair, the ability to hit cold winners off this side. Gee, he has great timing there. And he can hurt guys like almost no one else from that forehand side. Nadal's is a beauty too. It's a different type of forehand, heavier, more topspin, more consistent type of hit. But Federer has the flair that you rarely see. His <laughs> timing's good early, isn't it? You picked it, Peter. He's hitting the ball straight out of the middle. Advantage. The backhand is a really good barometer of that. He has been known to spray a few at times, but there's just simply no sign of that. There hasn't been any sign of it during these championships. What a big blow this would be early on in the semi-final. As impressive a start as you could wish to see from the master. One hundred and fifty seven kilometers an hour, that ground stroke. You can't time anything better than that. And I like that tactic too much. You know, it's, it's a diminished part of the sport, the serve and volley these days. But when you serve as well as this guy and rarely miss a volley, it's a great change up. And it, it just keeps Nadal guessing a little bit more on the return. There you go, variety. So you don't have to serve and volley every time. If you serve and volley once, it puts that thought into the head of the opposition. 30. What a master. He just uh, he knows instantly the ball is struck by the opposition. What shot he's going to play next. Nadal so deep in the court. He drops it short. Federer was two metres inside. The, the drop shot didn't have to be perfect. Rafa taking a chance now because he's been overpowered. 40 Uncle Tony gives a nod of reassurance, but there's a stern face on everyone sitting in Rafael Nadal's support box. It is very early stages of the semi-final, but the warning signs are there already. Uh -huh. Well, I thought it was almost a perfect surf. Nearly 200 k's, 197, out near the line. You don't expect that to go for a winner. Right in the junction there of the sideline and the T uh, and the uh, service line.
good start. Absolutely magnificent stuff from Federer early. The fireworks, the Australia Day fireworks, are going to come after 9 o'clock tonight. The fireworks have started early down there. The, the, the nature of Nadal is to come out and not make a mistake early on. Tonight he's he's come out with that that attitude. That's normal. Federer has just opened the gate and taken off, sprinted to the front by being aggressive. Nadal will step it up a little bit here. You'd expect. Mistake. Only had to get it over. Sorry, he, he had Nadal cold there, didn't he? Yep. And Fitzy, I think that's a shot we're going to see a bit of from Roger tonight because two nights ago in Nadal's match against Thomas Berdich, we noticed the fact, particularly with the return of serve, at times he was four metres behind the baseline. Yeah. He well, does do that a lot. Yeah, he does. Uh, on this court, it's a little tougher to drop shot than on the clay. I, I like the forehand, the second last shot in that last rally from Federer, though. He's using that. Hard and deep early. Well, the great players, when they miss, they miss by a fraction. This ball was beautifully hit, and that would have created a, a little problem, I think, for Nadal if it had come over. He was going for the angle. Another two centimetres, and that was uh, almost perfect. something that we can expect to see a lot of from Federer, the slice and trying to get the ball low and just capitalise on Nadal in that area? Well, well, I think he incorporates the slice. That's his natural uh, uh, shot at times. It depends what position he's in and if he's defending. He'll use it a little bit. It's, it's in his natural game. But I think, uh, I think he's going hard and deep uh, as early as he can in the rally. And he's trying to use the net a little bit, move forward in the court. He's just using variety early. on the board in the first set. It's going to be a hard day's night, though, Federer by the look of it for Rafa. Well, we saw last night uh, David Ferrer, the Spanish number two, giving uh, Novak Djokovic a lot of trouble, a lot of body punches, making, that, making Djokovic work incredibly hard. Nadal has heavier body punches than that. And you can tell there that it was like a hand grenade coming off the surface, exploding with the top spin and the forward speed. He's starting to settle into his rhythm now. Well, I think it always helps unless if you go hard into that forehand, you have Locked to go real hard. So he's caught here a bit short, has to top spin the ball. To get it over the high part of the net, that takes a bit of the forward speed momentum off the ball and gives Nadal a bit of extra time to get to his forehand. Oh. 
15 off him. But Federer serves better than Nadal. You know, it's, he, he gets more free points. He hits it harder. He won't, uh, like you mentioned earlier, probably have as high a percentage of first serves into play. But when he gets it in, he'll get a higher percentage of free points. So if he serves well, it's a big part of this matchup. And also, Peter, I think 30, 30, 30. if he uses the forehand hard into the Nadal forehand, you know, and he does it a lot early, which he's which he's done. He's also hit the backhand out there too. But the forehand hard into Nadal's forehand, the Spanish the Spanish player will start looking then a bit more for the for the forehand. It opens up that backhand side slightly, so he'll also be able to use that as an option. He's hitting that forehand well off the off forehand, isn't he? And it just constructs the points so magnificently. There's his wife, Mirka. She's seen it all before. Interestingly, Federer, at the moment, seems to have backed off his first serve a little bit from where he can be. Fitzy was talking about the fact that he is faster. His quick one at the moment is only 198. Here's a perfect start, Peter. Gee, he's playing well, isn't he? Oh. And there it is. That's the first unreturned serve for Nadal. Ken Rosewall sitting in the background in the presidential box looking on. Well, we know he's a bull. Rafa Nadal, he will be there till the finish, no matter how long it takes. And he's making a mini stand right now to try and get back into this first set if he can, before it's too late. Stop oh, it. no! I think that's the shot of the tournament so far. You have got to be kidding me. How did he do that? Hey, don't, don't ask me. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> what a shot. That is unbelievable. Well, well, it takes anticipation as well as timing and ability to, to pull the shot off. But he was he was half on the way, wasn't he? As Nadal was hitting the ball, he picked that it was going off to his forehand side. But what timing over the high part of the net. Perfect forehand. You know, the problem playing Rafael Nadal is that you have to finish so many of your points with some form of winner because he doesn't give you too many unforced errors a bit like David Ferrer but heavier ball okay a better player heavier ball so so you can't just sit there and rally with him you have to be able to you have to have the ability to finish the point with a winner or he won't miss not very often anyway Awesome. It had to be perfect, yeah. and it just about was. Well, I'm not sure I've seen him start better, Federer. I've seen him play a lot of matches, and this is as good as it gets, I think, in the early stages. Perfect choice. You know, it's not just about hitting the shot. It's knowing and making a decision in a split second what shot to go for. That was unbelievable touch. There you go, a freebie. First ace of the match to Nadal. His best serving Federal performance aces wise was in the first round against Kuznetsov, where he served nine aces, but he's not a prolific ace server for all the reasons that Fitzy has been talking about. 
Well, I, I think it's also interesting, as well as Rogers playing, and, and as well as he played that last game and the spectacular tennis that he played, Nadal still wins that game. So that's how well you have to play to beat Rafa Nadal. And if you miss the odd ball like that, where Love for two. Two. normally you won't, generally you'll make that shot if you're Roger Federer. But if he throws in one or two of those in one game, bang, he can lose his service uh, advantage. I get the feeling, Fitzy, we touched on it a moment ago, I get the feeling that Federer has backed off a bit on his first serve because Nadal is standing so far back. Oh, great construction there. There's always an accumulative reason why Federer or, or the great players will choose where they hit the ball. You know, that was constructed. He played every forehand across court, well, hooked down the line here to the Nadal backhand until he got the right one to go for the winner. Not once so far in this match has he tried the low flat one. His quickest serve of the match, 198. He's capable of at least 10k an hour quicker than that. Well, an unusual mistake. It'll be the odd one, but they're few and far between 20. normally from Nadal. That's always a huge bonus if you're... Uh, playing against him. Well, he went for the drop volley. Okay, so he sensed a slight change here, Peter, and there has been. He made a couple of errors here that he didn't make in the first few games. And look, you can't play perfect tennis all the time. He goes for the drop volley. Maybe a fraction off centre there and an unusual miss. And that was the first time he's tried to flatten it out on a big point. 30 all. Little window here for Nadal. And the window just got wider. 30 40. 40. This is the quality of this man. His opponent has come out firing, in the words of John Fitzgerald, like he's never seen him start a match before. And all of a sudden, he might find himself just level. Another mistake, two drop volley mistakes there in that game from Federer. The break back comes. About an hour to go before the fireworks display on the banks of the Yarra. I wonder what stage we'll be at when that happens. So he can't stay up on that cloud forever. So he's just uh, had a slight trough. Federer here in his form. Impossible, I think, to keep the level up that he was going at. Now he has to try and just regroup, play solid here. Looks like it's going to be even, possibly, at 4 all. He needs to... Yeah, and a few miss hits. So, Ooh, they? yeah, his form's dropped off a bit, and that's... Uh, that's from the constant barrage, I guess, of Nadal, but Fort that happens. Years. Peaks and valleys. A 
one stage in the third game, it was 12 points to three in favour of Federer. Since then, 17 points to 11 in favour of Nadal. is missed timing balls all of a sudden when they were yeah, coming straight out of the middle early on and he's wrapped the frame around at least half a dozen balls in the last couple of games unusual there that Rafa is actually changing rackets you can see that coming off the frame there of Roger and it's talking in his hand Rafa normally I, I would think would change the racket when the balls are changed. So maybe he didn't want to change while he was serving there, but he's gone for a new restring at 4 all. And here's where Federer has to just realign his thinking, get back to uh, basics, play a good solid service game here to keep his nose in front. Oh. Ooh from the crowd, the ball bounced up and clocked someone right on the noggin. Look at the look on Rafa's face. He hates giving away those Fitzgerald. three points. You know, it's funny, the players, I think Lendl started it years ago, Peter, you know, the change, when the balls are changed at seven and nine and then ongoing nine games, he would change his restring. So he might think his restring had lost a little bit of tension in those games. And then when the new balls came along, they were a little faster through the air, he'd get a slightly tighter racket again. on the first point Nadal just sprayed the first ball he had a brand new restring maybe it takes a shot or two to get used to that as well it should be slightly tighter but he just sprayed the first one so after a couple of hits back on track second serve 48 years. you know he is one of the great servers Federer under pressure it's amazing how often he makes the first serve and then when he needs to hit a great second serve close to the line Pete Sampras was probably the best I ever saw at that and they say Pancho Gonzalez back in the 60s was pretty damn good, Correct, good. good, good game. quick game okay. for Federer overall Nadal's going to have a look at the mark but he's not going to bother challenging Team First set's always incredibly important, isn't it? In these big tense matches, important matches, get your nose in front. The guy who wins the first is not always, in the end, the winner, but uh, it always tips the scales slightly in the beginning. The longer the rally goes, the more it probably favours Nadal. That's Pretty his easy. natural way of playing, his style. It's a tactic he likes to build and build with. And Federer so far has kept the points pretty short. He's hit a lot of cold winners. He started to miss a few in the last couple of games that has kept the points short also. But he would prefer the points shorter, Nadal longer. Seems remarkable to think, as it stands, that Roger Federer has now made more unforced errors than his hit winners. That seemed unthinkable early in this set. It's 10 winners, 11 unforced errors now. That not an unforced error. Nadal is in the same boat. Five winners, eight unforced errors. Oh, 
Great serve there. Federer had premeditated a move out wide. But the serve beating him too good, too close to the line with all of that side spin that Nadal creates. All of a sudden, Fitzy, the serve is dominating. The last three games held to love. Pressure moves from one end to the other. Now it's Rogers' turn. That's a good way to start. That's the first legal serve that he's got in over 200 kilometres an hour. First time he's decided to flatten one out down the middle. so important I think against Nadal he got the ball short and he he can really rip it back high and with so much bounce this this backhand really deep so he has less time there to hurt you with his natural topspin style so Federer trying to hit the ball deep on both sides I think the deeper he hits it the more effective it is Federer might be in trouble. The forehand was okay, but not quite good enough, I thought. The off forehand this time. Nadal gets a real piece of this. He didn't quite go close enough to the line, especially the sideline there. He's, been, he's made to play a tough volley, but good enough, obviously. that well you rarely see that some of us tennis players make a lot of those but you rarely see it from the racket of Roger Federer he just completely mishit that somehow his angle the angle of the racket face was wrong Great volley. Makes up for it. Uh, Federer didn't take any skin off those knuckles. Great forehand down the line there from Nadal. This forehand, look, a good shot against uh, a normal player. I hope the skin didn't come off there. It is a very abrasive court service, uh, surface, and if you happen to scrape your hand along it, we've seen many players lose some bark over the years. There's the depth. If he's going to miss Nadal, there's a there's a slightly higher chance it'll come off a deep ball from the opposition.
Oh, huge. Bread and butter. This is where he likes it, Rafa. You get too short, bouncing up high. He says thanks very much with that one. With that extreme grip and the modern forehand he possesses, not many people have hit this shot better. with that a chance to really ask Nadal a question in this game and it was off a second serve that was only 131 kilometers an hour the tie break beckons oh. and the tie break is with yeah, us yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a look at their respective records in tie breaks, career tie breaks. Federer has a better record percentage wise. He's won almost two of every seven. three that he's played. Nadal has 140 wins, 87 losses. Federer, 307 wins, 157 losses. So, in percentage terms, on those raw figures, you would think he might be a slight favourite, but look at the 2011 figures, almost identical. Such a premium on the server in the breaker. An important start. One zero. One zero. Rafa not happy, feels like that's an unforced error. Dahl has made nine of those unforced errors so far in the set. Federer, five more. A very high number for him. 14 unforced errors. Didn't look that way early on. How about the depth on that? Yeah. Well, it's more risk, isn't it? It's higher risk when you hit the ball deep. But it can draw the air at great depth there from Federer. Well, he generally knows that he'll get a hit at the, at the serve of uh, Rafa against some players. You know, they may hit the ace or the, the free point more often. With Rafa, you feel like you're into his serve. Just hard to beat him from the back of the court once you get it in. Miss hit. Two Uncle Tony, stern faced. He's a man at the other end of the court, so he can't really get too much of a message or much encouragement to him at this stage. Federer with the mini break. Well, Rafa there with the upper hand early in that rally. After the first two balls he hit, there's Paul Anacone on the right of the screen, Merka in the front. 3-1 Federer. Federer. Pretty amazing to have coached the great Pete Sampras, followed by maybe the even greater Roger Federer. That's Paul Anacone's lot in life. Might have had the two easiest jobs in the world. <laughs> That's one way to look at it. Now, he 
has a first challenge in the call on the right Elected to challenge so far Both in the set. Hands. He doesn't like challenging. No, He's I'm got an awful record at challenging. And I've got a feeling if he loses, if he wins this challenge even, he'll have to replay the point. And he catches the line. So a tough call for the linesman. He gets a first serve again, but they'll have to replay it. And to his credit, no histrionics from Federer, just accepts Jake Garner's decision from the chair and gets on with it. See if he can duplicate it. Down the middle, that'll do. Well, there's the difference. The odd more free point, Peter. And if it comes at the right time, it's invaluable. Quickest serve of the match, too. 205. Federer well and truly in the driver's seat. Too good. Too good. That's all you can say to that and change ends. Four two, Four two. The great players play the pressure points at a different level. Sure. Yeah. That first forehand was just lethal. And, and to hit a winner against someone of the speed of Roger Federer, you, you need to hit more than one ball close to the line usually. He's able to do it. These are where matches are won and lost in situations like this. Rafa simply cannot afford a slip up with this second delivery after the change of ends. Otherwise, the first set will be on Federer's racket. Those battle hardened, battle weary legs that somehow carry him to a ball when you just expect that he's not going to be able to get there. He does it time and time again. First part of the equation here get a first serve into play. Federer is challenging the call on the right center service line. Well, I think he feels like he might have made a mistake here, Roger. I'm not sure. If he's wrong here, he loses the point. If he's wrong, he loses it. He's wrong. Four millimeters. Four three. Federer. Gee, that was a big call because he got that. You know, he got that ball back into play. He was in the point. So still with a mini break in hand here, Federer. Merka has those uh, beautifully manicured nails, but they're in jeopardy of being bitten up to the elbow. Rafa was looking at the lines person as he was running towards him in the hope that the right arm was going to go out and it didn't move. Well, Peter, if we've ever seen a complete player, uh, you know, you'd have to look at Roger Federer. He, his foot speed there was like a cat. First step, gave him the opportunity here. He knew, he knew Nadal would float this backhand because he had him stretching. Just oh. perfect again. Magician. This one is straight out of the instruction manual, what he's coming up with. He's not home yet, but it's going to take something from Rafa now. Three set points. And he wasn't hoping for this uh, reply from Rafa. He does a heck of a job, Nadal, to make Federer hit that half volley. He was hoping for another higher volley. He has to come up with that. Just oozing talent. 6-3 Federer in the breaker. Well, he's 
going to have at least one opportunity on yeah. his own serve, but Rafa doesn't need to worry about that. Just get this point over and done with. Well, Federer needs to win this now from his point of view because a loss of this set from this position would really hurt. It would knock him around mentally, you'd think. Get in a winning position, you need to finish it. And he's going to need to use his own serve. As usual, Nadal grits his teeth. 65. This well, has been an outstanding set, John Fitzgerald. Yeah, well, you'd think he'll go for the ace on the first ball here, probably. Look for the free point. You don't know where he can hit either one just as well. Where will he go? Mistake, a rare one. First set's over. Nearly an hour it takes. Federer looked as though he was going to achieve that result early on. He had to fight so hard to do it, but he's got the first blow in the semi-final. Seven, Seven games, to games to six. Rafa looking to fight back at the start of the second. Well, the accuracy is the big thing, isn't it? E even more than power, I think. I mean, he doesn't crush this back end. It's up high, so not easy to hit it too hard, but it's the direction on the line. If you get the ball close to the line, you don't have to hit it like a rocket. Direction just as important, if, if not more so. A little glance from Rafa up at the helicopter that's been hovering overhead for about 10, 15 minutes now. Oh, how about the squash shot? Well, gee, what else can he do? Nadal did everything right there. He had Roger defending. That's how important defence is in this sport. It's not just all about hitting power and winners. It's defending when you need to. And he comes up with the squash shot. You're right. But he controls it. Look at the angle on that. And that made it a very difficult next shot for Rafa. An opportunity early. Uncle Tony can yeah. only applaud. And again, another long rally won by Federer. Oh, I'm not sure he was all that convinced that the serve was in. There was, seemed a momentary hesitation there, and yet he's still able to come up with that. Well, he's starting this second set the way he started the first. Yeah, he is. You know, and the reaction from Uncle Tony was, was a really good, fair one. I think he thought, well, my lad Rafa played a good point in that second point, and he just applauded Roger's brilliance. Well, he's done it again in the third point to go to love 40. What a game. That is an enormous statement of intent at the start of the second set. Yes. Rafa's dad looking on, a little concerned. A moment of magic from his son there. Well, you can imagine both these players thinking at times, what do I have to do to beat this other guy? They'd both be thinking, that was a, an awfully good first volley. <laughs> Nadal hits it across court for a winner on the line. Oh! This is where Federer will need to be careful. Love to be. 
as amazing as that first game of the second set was, it's only a break of serve if you hold yours. And he's not heading in the right direction for that to happen just yet. I think the challenge is in vain here. More in frustration than anything. Certainly not confident. Well, I think I think he slightly missed it, that Peter, that forehand. He, he'd be frustrated at that too. Oh, four four millimeters. Closer than we all thought. Yeah. But it puts him in exactly the same spot where Rafa was. And that is that we could come up with successive breaks of serve to love. Can you believe that? Well, the odds makers bet on anything these days, but if you had have gone to a bookmaker and said, look, I want a price about uh, successive breaks of serve to love in this match. I think you would have been able to write your own ticket. Steady as she goes. On serve at the start of the second set. And it's going to be a second set that is more than likely going to be interrupted unless we go to the situation where one player completely takes over because the fireworks display is round about 20 minutes or so away from now. They'll engineer it during a change of ends. But it will interrupt the flow. Too good. We're in for the long haul here, Peter. Seems that way. And no one's complaining. certainly intent on running around onto the forehand side 30 30 30. especially if he gets a slow second delivery from Nadal and he got one there at 136 There's the shot that John Fitzgerald was talking about. Yeah, that, that's the shot, I think, that can win in this match. 30 the off forehand, the off forehand and, or down the line to the Nadal backhand. Down the line to the left hand, excuse me, the left hand is forehand. And he needs to flatten that out. If he gets it close to the line and hits it consistently, he'll win a lot of points there tonight. It's so, so it seems.
the type of point Nadal wants. And you do that over a period of time and you can wear opponents out. 40 minutes. Even when they're as fit and they move as well as Roger Federer. He hammered that ball from start to finish and Federer was defending really the whole way. It's only a regulation hold of serve, but it's noteworthy in that it comes on the back of successive breaks at the start of the second set. We're on serve. Nadal leads 2-1. Amazing venue this will be. There's that off forehand with Federer taking advantage of the fact that Nadal was almost back with the lines people. Yeah, new balls here too, Peter. And you'd think logic says that would favour Federer. Maybe hit the ball for more winners with the new balls. They're quicker through the air. Great second serve, wasn't it? Well, it's underrated, his serve. You know, people don't talk about it that much. Sneaky quick, as oh. we said. He, he can crank it up to 210 at the very top. Yeah. But he, he gets so many serves in between 203 and 207. Yeah, and he... And there's one. So he can hit it fast. He can. He, he's incredibly oh, accurate. And when it matters, he always serves well. Rarely does he not. Underrated part of his game. Well, a bit of luck for Roger, but he comes up with a love game, and that is against the trend in what we've seen so far in this second set. Two games off. Just the second Grand Slam semi final meeting between this illustrious pairing. The French Open Championship of 2005 was the only other semi-final meeting. And the reason for that, of course, is because for so long they have been the world's number one and two. So they've been on opposite sides of the draw. Incidentally, Nadal won that semi-final in four sets in the French Open in 2005, as he so often did on the clay. Just get the feeling his timing has come back in a big way now. This is a period where Rafa is going to have to be pretty careful. We saw a few of those didn't we, in the middle of the first set. I don't know whether that's when he loses a little bit of intensity or maybe he doesn't quite get into position sometimes, but there was two or three of those in the middle of the first set. He doesn't want those to return here. He's got a, an opportunity, 15 all. You can see the relief. It's, it's all, it always takes the pressure off that unforced error on the opposition. Nadal appreciating that one. Comes up with one of his own. Yeah, unusual. And he's in a bit of a spot now. Merkel looks more concerned than Paul Anacone just at present.
15.30. A look at a second serve, a big moment in the second set and in the context of the match right here. Federer throws his head back in annoyance. Yeah, there's been three miss hits, I think, in a row. That one not so bad, but you'll be so disappointed there. Gee, big part of this match, two all in the second. Federer up a set with an opportunity. And you don't see him out there too often, trying something different just to give Nadal something different to look at. I don't mind the move. Well, he can't uh, understand, I think, why he's making so many errors on that back end tonight, Nadal. He really does it. He's just, and when he misses, he's hitting long tonight, it seems. Not a ton of these errors, but some annoying ones at the wrong time. He's made four unforced errors in the second set, three of them off the backhand side. Opportunity now for a third break of serve in this second set, but for Federer to once again pop himself in the driver's seat. Oh, he, he went for the big one early in the point, Federer. Deuce. Maybe in retrospect, just a bit early, he, he was on the back foot, wasn't he? So he's defending here. He's certainly not in control of the point there. And decides to take the risk early. Not the sort of thing that we see him do a lot. Early in a rally, just five shots in that rally. It's still very much on the knife's edge, though, this fifth game. Oh, again. So there's been some wildly mistimed shots from both players. In this game, Nadal looking as though he may be able to scrap himself out of trouble. That's a very yep. good hold. It was. Really strong for Nadal. Down a break point. He keeps his nose in front. 27th meeting between the pair. Federer looking to come up with win number 10 against his great foe. And the winner here, as we mentioned before, will have 72 hours to prepare for Sunday night's final. There's been a lot of discussion over the years, Fitzy, about whether that's an advantage or a disadvantage because you get into a pattern, get used to playing every second day, and then you have an extra one. Probably good for the body, though, at this time of oh, the fortnight. I think so. Yeah. You can have a day off tomorrow if you want. Oh, great return. A heavy slice on the stretch. He needed it to be perfect there, Nadal or Federer was all over the net. You know, when the serve's this close to the line, you, there's a fair chance you're going to get a slice return. Or well, certainly a blocked return without heavy topspin. And it has to be perfect to get the ball down low to the incoming volleyer. In cricket terms, that nearly yorked him. Nearly went under the racket. lofty standards that's one for the highlights reel well this is huge this game may be the turning point in this second set Federer not doing a lot wrong when you go wide like that you need to hit the ball for a winner
This is where you need the serve to come to the fore if you're Roger Federer. There's the reaction after that unbelievable shot from Rafa. And what a time to do it as well. One saved. Still two to come. change of pace sometimes it can be inviting disaster other times it draws an error 30, 40, 40. what a point gee let's not underestimate how good that was the hitting here is incredible 19 shots in the rally the Federer will be looking for another free point on the serve here you don't want to go through that every time to save three break points Unbelievable. Federer will be kicking himself after having had the break point opportunity in the previous game. Nadal puts the foot down, comes up with two of the shots of the tournament in the sixth game of the second set. And now maybe he's on the way to locking this thing up. Well, against mere mortals, that would have won the point. How's the defensive skills? Earlier in the point, Nadal did it off the forehand. The great players defend. They don't just attack. <laughs> vamos, vamos. <laughs> you think they're not pumped? They weren't the only ones after those two shots. That was something. We got away with it. It was a bit lucky. Nadal guessed the right way. Love the team. This is the one here where he could have put it anywhere. Nadal anticipated it beautifully, but he just couldn't get enough on the defensive lob. Patino. Remember their comparative court time coming into this semi-final. Nadal had been on court for in excess of five hours more than Federer. 12 hours 51 to 7 hours 38. With a mere mortal, you would think that that would come into play as the match draws on. In Rafa's case, perhaps not. Well, constantly, players that play uh, Nadal would feel like there's a hand grenade coming at them. The heaviness of shot that he has. But you know what? When Federer gets a forehand of his own, he puts a guy on the back foot. And you can see there Nadal's weight going back. 
Hits a lot of his forehands like that, but the weight of shot from Feder there was quite outstanding. When he gets the short ball on the forehand tonight, he's going to try to put it away. And why not with that shot in your repertoire? Good first serve. 30 on. 30 on. Here's one of those 30 all points that the coaches keep stats about. So important here, in particular for Nadal to be able to cement the break. He got a great serve in, just drilled it at him. 43. It's been a big turnaround, hasn't it? You've mentioned it, I know, but I think it's worth mentioning again. One lover breakdown after losing the first set, and Nadal has put his footprint back into this match. In the next five games, plus maybe this one, he's turned it on its head. Okay. Well, he is one game away from taking the second set. The fireworks interruption is not that far away, and Rafa probably wishes and hopes that it doesn't come now. And that is what's going to happen. Here we go. Nadal is the, of the two, he is the one who would prefer that this didn't happen now. But happen it does to celebrate Australia's National Day. And we get the opportunity from the banks of the Yarra with Government House, a speck in the distance in the Botanic Gardens. To wonder at this spectacle, but we're wondering at the spectacle that has taken place before us on Rod Laver Arena as well. Roger Federer now faced with the task of serving off that break. Never an easy thing to do when you're serving cold after a bit of a break to keep the set going. Oh. And there you go. Not unexpected after the interruption. We've seen it happen before over the years. It's not going to help Roger's love of a fireworks display much, I wouldn't think. He's nothing but, if not relentless, is he? Nadal, he makes you win every point. Oh. Well, amazing how this set looks like it might be 6-2 and it was one lover break to Love Federer. Yeah. And it's easy to read something into the way that Federer has come out after the break with a double fold and miss volley, but that was all about quality from Nadal. A clean winner. Three set points to level it up and guarantee we're going to four at least. Federer broken to love the game after the fireworks display. It'll be interesting to get his take on that after the match. Advantage for Nadal as well. Breaking Federer in the last game of that second set, serving first in the third. He is going to run it's around onto that forehand yeah. come hell or high water, it seems. Yeah. I still like this forehand, though. It, he, he just misses this. What a beautifully struck ball. I like it when he goes for that. That hurts Nadal and worries him when he goes hard and fast with that forehand into, the, into Nadal's left-handed forehand side. That first serve. Who's favourite right now? Well... I, I think you always go for the guy, don't you, that's won the previous set? Yep. 
but they've had so many five setters over the years. A five setter here in the final in 09 when Nadal won. And Nadal there won the first set. Federer the second, Nadal the third, Federer the fourth, Nadal the fifth. So they traded sets. So he who wins the, or who won the, the previous set in that match, never won the, the, next, the next set. So who knows? But the momentum with Nadal slightly here at the moment. Yeah, yeah, that's a big miss from the lines person. That hurts. Nadal is changing the call on the right near sideline. The ball was got in. Well, we're assuming that uh, the central umpire is correct here when he overrules it. So he's overruled it, and Nadal challenges it. And always, I'm sure, a heart starter for the central umpire there, but he was correct. So it hurts uh, Federer. They have to replay the point. Nets. Nets first. Federer trying to run around onto the forehand, give himself some room. Thought he was going to get the one down the middle or the body serve, and he didn't. Yeah, he doesn't go there too often, Nadal. Probably more likely to go there when he's up in the game. The second serve wide to the first court is rare for him. He usually fades it into the, the middle. Certainly on top, isn't he? Right, right at this moment. Absolutely. But then again, Roger was right on top after the first game of the second set. And look where we are now. Gee, he's uh, he's having a, an ordinary patch here, Roger, by his standards. This is a bit worrying for his camp because the, this is a big game here. I know they all are, but he, there's been a run against him. To go down a break early in the third after quickly losing the second would be a little bit of a disaster. Well, if he was to go down the break here, that would be three consecutive service games that he's dropped. Don't see that too often. Yeah, he's, in, uh, oh, he's in some interesting... In an interesting situation here, Federer. Two double faults for the match. He's served no more than three in any match so far. In fact, against Karlovic in the third round, he didn't serve one. He's lost his rhythm. He so has. Well, he's challenging, but he's, all he's done here is burnt a challenge, probably just give himself a bit more of a breather. This is extraordinary. He was broken to love at the end of the second set, remember, after the fireworks, and he's in danger of having the same thing happen here. Backs himself, isn't he? He needs to in this circumstance because 15, 14, the momentum of the match just at this very moment is very much in favour of the Spaniard. Still two break points to lead two love. He 
Well, Nadal having an issue there. That's unusual for him. The second serve. You count on your hand how many times he does this. Again, though, look where he was standing, Fitzy. Three metres behind the baseline yeah. for a serve that was 156. That takes a long time to get to. Yeah. Well, he plays the percentage. He wants to get the ball back into play and then start the rally. That's where he feels most confident. That's big. This will be big for Federer if he gets out of this game. Nadal getting jammed by the, the curve of the serve it causes him to drop the return short and then look out for Federer's forehand back to Juice and another yeah. big serve a little come on from Roger as well big game as John Fitzgerald said this would be huge this would be as big a service hold that he has had in these championships if he's able to pull it off here. It's a great return there though. That, that was an excellent first serve. So. They both understand the importance of this game. You know, there's been some strange tennis here, really. Nadal's missed a couple of balls in this game that are highly unusual for him. I'm not sure if I've ever seen him hit a foreign like that where the ball just falls off the face of the racket. Is that a little bit of tightness? Three deuces now. This is assuming monumental proportions, this game. Federer will just take so much confidence out of it if he's able to hold here. Just restore a bit of the equilibrium. If it goes the other way, Rafa well and truly on top. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Merka says that's not the time to be playing that, but he's got away with it. Yeah, he has. He, he got out of jail here. Normally when, when the ball hits the top of the net cord, it's strung so tightly it won't go over most of the time. Less than, well, I'd like to think uh, around 20% of the time that ball would go over and he gets away with it. He got there in time. A little unconvincingly, but that is massive. Well, it was and a must-win game, wasn't it, for Roger Federer? Because he needed to stop the momentum. And he can he needs to continue to stop it. You're at all concerned about the choice of shots that from Federer well, late in that game, Fitzy? Well, well the, that one, I think, was the right choice. The, the other one, debatably, I mean, he had a short forehand sitting there on the on the previous point. But, you know, the variety's good. I mean, I mean, you can't just keep hitting the same shot to Nadal. He'll get the majority of them back. So you need the variety, but I guess you need to p choose the right point to do it on.
for two months. months. He stands so close, doesn't he, Nadal? It helps that angle down the middle. And here on the second court, a little wider. Not much, but a little bit. That helps his uh, first serve out to the back end on this court. 30 30 minutes. Minutes. He looks more dangerous, doesn't he, Nadal, at the moment? I like the fact that Federer's moving around. He's, look, he's trying to put the pressure on the second serve. Rafa, he burnt him once out wide with the second ball, but he doesn't like to go there out wide to the first court. Is it time to put that in the bag for a little while? One might think so. First one for a while. And as the match wears on, that, that's an important column. You match that with the unreturnables. It's important for Federer, it really is. 40 in. It just takes the pressure. Two in a row, takes the pressure off. And he needs to hold a few service games easily, revert the pressure back. Because Nadal's got more pressure on him at the moment, moment than, than the reverse. Well, that game lasted about a minute. So he gets a breather. So here we go. New balls coming out. Yep. And Federer goes for the change of racket. I think he likes to change it when he's receiving these days. So if he had been serving, he might have either changed it the game before or the game after. Seems to have altered his take on that. Who's it going to be? One set all, two games all. He's got a feel of a match that this man is a bit happier about it as it stands. That could all change very rapidly though. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Unforced errors are 33 to 19. Federer having made 14 more. Forced errors are about the same. Federer's plus five in the winners, 24 to 19. Are we sensing another mini reversal of uh, form here? Momentum change slightly. Federer stepping it up again. Two great backhands there. The one handed classic across court angle. Well, 
32. Looked like a mere mortal there. It was only 143. Absolutely nothing on it. Yeah, the body weight going backwards a little bit. Yeah. He wants a forehand. But the angle of the second serve out there from the left-hander just complicates the issue slightly. Of the two, it's the Spaniard who is holding serve more easily at present he's only dropped one point on serve in this third set and he leads 3-2 on serve gee i thought nadal might be there for that seemed like it 15. and i thought federer here might go back down the line and wrong footing but caresses that across his strings i just thought nadal had a chance there He's certainly weaving his magic with the serve tonight, Roger Federer, the way that he's mixed it up. His quick serve has been 207, but it's been very rare that he's elected to pull the quick flat one out. It's been mainly those. Indeed. A collection of sliders going wide to the backhand. His average first serve speed is 185. Four double faults for the match. That's the most he served in any match in this fortnight. to finish that way but it was simply magnificent what about the collection and the variation of the shots there there's the defense again and i'll never look and he's there so quickly first step outs out of the defensive shot so good and strong bit of luck there that would have gone right into the hitting zone for federer but too high as it turns out still has a game point to be very vigilant here. He led 40 love in this game. Forced the pressure by coming in. Nadal heard him and most likely saw him. Yeah, I think you're right. He did see him and had to adjust his shot. So the variety is, all, is always important. And, and the thinking of Federer here, a second serve, he comes in. He, ne he knows he can't just play every point the same against Nadal. That's what the Spanish uh, champion wants. Unforced errors in the third set. Federer 12, Nadal 2. Oh, 
<laughs> well, we saw Nadal hit a shot like that in the second set. Defensive slice that's timed perfectly with, with speed and distance to get down low to the incoming opponent. Wonderful talent. Well, in my mind, the only thing that Federer maybe could do different here is just to hit the ball with a bit more depth. And Nadal plays so deep in the court that anything that's three-quarter court bounces up beautifully for him. Very tough to beat time and again from the back of the court is this man. Query up to Jake Garner in the chair, got the nod. Well, this is a huge point. Yeah, Rafa needs to be careful. Been very good at landing the first serve on these clutch points so far, Rafa. it for most of this third set and the latter stages of the second set his reaction was really interesting there it was he, he, he was hitting his uh, almost below the knee I mean he's you know he's had an issue with that knee before the tournament started he misses this ball he's sort of referring to his movement I think he, he was almost punching the, the calf muscle below the knee so I wonder whether it's the tight bandage at it he's quite content the ball went wide he's certainly going for his shots as John Fitzgerald said he's not going to die wondering Certainly the intention for Federer to get the first good shot in in the rally. If he doesn't, he has to defend more. If he can open the court up with the first shot, and particularly off the forehand side, then he's in a better position. You make Nadal defend, at least, at least you're in the point. Break point number two. Well, flat serve, it's his least favourite. He doesn't like going here anywhere near as much as wide. He feels so much more comfortable fading the ball wide. But eventually, he felt he needed a free point and takes the risk. Second quickest serve of the match for Nadal, 193 kilometres an hour, only one click shy of his quickest. Good 
first double fault of the match if Hawkeye confirms it. They both walked to the side of the court thinking that the call was okay. And it was. Third time lucky perhaps for Roger. At three all in the third set. We'll find out if three's a lucky number for him. Two big clutch serves, haven't they been? The last two break points. Back to his old favourite again. He was there, Roger. Something's going to give if you keep knocking on the door, doesn't it? Yeah. It simply has to. Time and time again, we keep on talking about players at any level having to take their opportunities. But when you're playing one of the very best the game's produced in recent years, you simply have to follow that mantra. Break point number four. again and more effective at that and there's another point that he wins off his first serve in this set he's only dropped the one point when his first serve has gone into play that equates to 93 percent success rate Nadal down at 72 in that department, so that's a big difference. Up. Well, you know, I mentioned earlier, early in this broadcast, Peter, when he served for the second set against one Martin Del Potro in the previous round, the quarterfinal, he got to the penultimate game, or the last game, in fact, uh, in the second set, and he really stumbled a little bit. He, he served a couple of doubles, kept missing his first serve. Oh. Nadal waiting for the forehand into that corner. So the double fault there coming back to haunt him. Two break back points. 15 40. Not a bad forehand, but Nadal just so quick. And he was looking for it. Another example of the champions when prodded, when challenged. They find something, they get an extra gear.
had the chance, Federer, and he decelerated on that forehand. He's going to be kicking himself. Yeah, a great first serve there. He had a chance to finish the point, and normally that's what he'll do. Well, what that means is Nadal has had the momentum now since midway through that second set, right up until the previous game. Federer grabs it, but only holds it for about three minutes. That's got to wear away at you, no matter how good you are. Kim Kleisters amongst the interested onlookers. Having bowed out of the race for the championship. Look at it. Kim hasn't gone for the presidential uh, seats down there. Is just <laughs> up amongst the public, enjoying it, as we all are. Hope you are wherever you're watching around the world. If you're not, you're pretty hard to please. Wonderful point, wasn't it? 23 shots in the rally, Fitzy. Both players covering in excess of 60 metres in that point alone. Once more, because generally, if he st serves and stays back, Nadal will hit the ball with height to get the depth. If he comes in, he'll be looking to drop it short at the feet, but too late, he's, he was surprised. For two For Total points one in a match can sometimes be instructional. This time they're probably a bit misleading. Nadal's won 94, Federer's won 86, so eight points the difference. But all of those eight points just about came in the last few games of the second set. Take that out of the equation, 
and it's pretty much a line ball. Set all, five all, 15 all. mistake with the forehand this time. Nadal takes the risk, goes for his least favourite serve. Federer hits a good return. Maybe a fraction of a miss hit on the first return, but there was no miss hit there. Gee, that was off the middle and a screaming forehand winner down the line. Analogy is, is a boxing match, isn't it? Very much so. Just punching each other as hard as they can go. Well, we talked about at the start of the match, this is like Ali B. Frazier on the tennis court in so many ways. One of the great rivalries of sport. And they go right up there in Grand Slam rivalries as of tonight too. They equal the number of times that Lendl and McEnroe have played in Grand Slam matches. Nadal there on the defence, but what a defensive player he is. We've talked about it a lot. Just such a big part of his repertoire. The defensive skills of the Spaniard just as good as we've ever seen, I think, in the sport. Roger can hope for as a tie break in the third set. Nadal is the first to six. How important is that going to be? Seven aces to three in Federer's favour. They're the balls that Federer doesn't like to miss. Well, he, you, you expect him to hit this in his sleep inside the court. He has Nadal running and he gets his favourite shot, the fo short forehand. Oh, oh, gee, that hurts as well. And Nadal's going to check. He thinks it might have missed. Nadal is challenging the call on the right center service line. Interesting challenge this. He's got one Ball's challenge gone. remaining. He'll get an extra one if it goes to a tiebreaker, but not a lot to flirt with here in terms of... Gee, that's interesting. That's one yeah, millimeter. That's, that's what that is. One mil is the official margin. And he doesn't gain a point from that. He gains the opportunity to hit a second serve. Ooh. OK, 
Okay. Right here. This is vital. Talked about big points in the match. This is going to be point number 189. And none more important than this one after more than two and a half hours. of the third set, Rafael Nadal appeared in control. Federer has made him fight it every inch of the way. In lots of matches, two sets to one lead would be fatal. Probably not quite as much because of the talent of these two men, but it's still a decided advantage. And Nadal stands on the edge of it. serve and executes the forehand like we expect him to little pump of the fist from Roger after that one too he knows the importance of that well they, they know the importance of it but they play each point on its merits if he gets the short ball he goes for it if it's a deep return he'll, he'll give it respect try to play the percentage get back in the point but the short ball on the forehand that's the one to go for for him Get that person in the Australian cricket team. <laughs> How good was that? Well, this is a huge part of the match, isn't it? Is, is that an understatement? Or I know it's not. It's uh, it is like Everest. This well, part of the match. Yeah, it could have been two sets to one, Nadal, yeah. and now the breaker looming. Federer can hold here. with a couple of massive holds of serve in this third set in the second game and then 10 games later and it was down break points on both occasions so does Federer take just a little edge into the tie break because of his superior record you wouldn't think so no it's a toss of the coin surely yep Pressure straight up for Nadal, though. He serves just the one point. Needs to hold it because it can set the tone if he doesn't. Before he hit that backhand, Federer knew he was coming in. So about, about now he makes up his mind he's coming in. But he doesn't quite get it deep enough, does he? I mean, he had a chance. He had to hit a, an exceptional volley, though, a tough one. Because that ball was coming on him at a rate of knots. Awesome. Well, structure to beauty. There's another dot inside the service line on that graph for Nadal. Gee, what a return that was. Great serve from Federer. And he hit that lunge back in return to give him a chance to get the upper hand in the point. And it was the second point of the first set tiebreak where things changed around effectively. And Federer took control of it. Now the reverse. In the 
the second point on in the first set tie break, every point went with serve. If the same happens here, Nadal will be two sets to one up. He's so challenging the goal on the right first sideline. Side 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 the ball was tough. Well, he's got an extra one. He's got three to work with. I think it's wide, but you never know. Three one. No, no, no. Federer has, has two challenges with him. here has Nadal and the 4-1 in this breaker that's substantial he deserves it the, the constant barrage and pressure that he puts on uh, his opponents including the man with the most Grand Slam singles titles in history well the pressure he exerts is quite uh, unrelenting Didn't do enough for the forehand, did he? Right. Nadal in control. Yeah, it's just about in the book now, you would think. Just landing between the service line and the baseline. So he loves to defend, Peter. That's why so many of those dots on the graph are so deep in the court. And he's harder to put the ball away against when he's back there. Federer has to, he has to go for more with his favourite shot. Just not quite hitting it perfectly there when he had the opportunity. So, not out of it yet, but the writing on the wall for Roger Federer here in the third set. forehands has he in this tiebreaker and that's been the difference I think not often that you see Roger Federer get so far behind in a tiebreak in his heart of hearts he's already started to concentrate on the fourth set now the last time they were a set each in a five setter was on this very court three years ago in the final of the Australian Open Nadal won the third set tiebreak and then won the match You're pulling the trigger early there and you'd expect that when you're down He's probably not inclined to play that grinding type of point here in a uh, Federer he'll go for the winner early in the rally might be a little different if it was five all in the breaker instead of five one or six one excuse me it was depth but not easy to hit the ball within a meter of the baseline but that sort of speed every time Peter so when he gets it there it gives him a lot better opportunity if he drops it short like the first one Nadal's uh, more efficient but back in there 
was a two tougher points, shot. Two points off his serve here, Fitzy, and then Nadal has another set point at 6-5, which would be extremely interesting. And we might get there yet. There's the difference when uh, Roger Federer gets the forehand near the line. There's four saved. Yeah, and, Ro and Rafael Nadal's heart rate will be a lot higher now than it was just four points ago. You better believe it. If somehow Federer was able to get out of this tie break, the momentum shift would be so drastic. Well, it's the same scenario, isn't it, as the first set when Federer led 6 3, it got back to 6 5. If you lose when you have those set points, that hurts you big time. Four set points saved. Here's the last of them for the time being. sound that you hear is Rafa and Uncle Tony and all of his support staff breathing a big sigh of relief. Daunting thought. 15. Still serving at over 200 k's though, Rog. He's got the new balls too, so that's going to help. Well, he's always going to he's always going to smash you would think with the natural tendency of his serve here Nadal feels much safer when he comes around the outside of the ball and curves it from left to right Federer is challenging the call on the right center service line the ball was called out well, Roger's confident he thinks it's in 30 Gee, that was a that was a big miss from the Lions person. It was. Roger doesn't often look confident when he's challenging. the net such a vast difference in the number of times that they've visited the net tonight we've touched on that Federer has been in there 41 times only one about half of them Nadal's only been in there 11 times Opening service game would come as a welcome First relief to Roger chances. Federer. Go. He was looking for that one down the middle and that missed by a fair way. You know what's ironic here? Novak Djokovic is probably sitting in the hotel back in the city centre here in Melbourne watching this match his record against Nadal has been quite dominant in previous times he's probably thinking okay well if I can look past Andy Murray for a second and that's no guarantee but if I can look past him for a second I'd probably rather play Nadal here than Federer he's got a 16-13 record against Nadal in fact, I think it's Nadal who's 16-13, but Djokovic in recent times just dominated him, mm -hmm. beat him in six finals mm -hmm. last year. Oh. 
Too good. Well, Federer did well to stay in that point. Nadal had him pinned down into the ropes. in the effectiveness of the drop shot for Federer tonight. Great illustration of how much spin the players impart on the ball to play a drop shot on this surface. You have to have that. Otherwise, the ball will just sit up. then with pretty convincing holds of serve to begin the fourth set. Our colleague, the great Fred Stolly, just popped his head into the back of the box and speculated that we might be here for a very late night. <laughs> I think I think he was hoping we would be. <laughs> it's possible, but I don't think we'll be here later than the night that I shared this commentary box with Fred a few years ago. change of direction there from Nadal not just with his foot speed but he noticed there he held that forehand and noticed that Federer here starts to move to his left just as he gets to the ball Federer goes to the left and he holds the forehand and he would have gone across court normally I think there Not. That occasion I was talking about was when Leighton Hewitt played uh, Marcos Bagdatis. They didn't get on court until round about midnight. And the match went until 20 to 5 or thereabouts in the morning. And the place was just about full when it finished. <laughs> it was amazing. You don't see that half century brought up too often. Oh, lovely. Yeah, I love it when he throws the seven volley in. But, you know, if you do it too often, well, then you lose the surprise. He's a great uh, executor of volleying, though. Beautiful. Wish we'd see more of it. Thoughts. Trouble for Federer here early in the fourth again. It's relentless pressure from the Spaniard. Dude. Big serve on the big point once more. That one was 199, and that was a wide serve, so he mightn't have served too many quicker balls than that all night. Nadal just having to change direction as well. Oh. 207, that's equal to his quickest of the night. Yeah, and that's a good point, Peter. You serve wide out to that second quarter, and it won't register on the gun. 
As fast, that's his fastest registering serve there. The one the right hand is down the middle to the first court. Serve volley again, serves him well. Once more, Federer digs himself out of a bit of a predicament. I mean, law of averages here, you know, the guy with two sets to one up. He has to be favourite. And uh, I think apart from the beginning of the first set, right at the start, and then after Federer, of course, won the first set, Nadal probably has looked like the favourite just that little bit longer, hasn't he? I think so. Now we're in the fourth hour. Fitzy, you know what the good news is, though, Peter? What's that, Fitzy? If Federer does win this, this, this match, if, if he wins this fourth set, this match will go down as another one of their classics. Yep. And we play to advantage, remember? So we won't have a tie break in the fifth set if we get there. They're the types of matches you remember your whole life. You don't forget these. This goes to five. Hang on to your horses. We talked about that epic final in 2009. In the space of a couple of days, Nadal played two of the greatest matches ever seen at the Australian Open yep. because in the semi-final, he played Vadasco, which is the longest singles match ever at the Australian Open, and that was a match of the highest quality that you could imagine. <laughs> it was. Vadasco in great uh, form that year, wasn't he? In fact, I think the quote of the tournament came from one of our American colleagues when he said that He'd hit another winner at one stage, and they said, Vadasco is like Tabasco. Hot sauce is on fire. <laughs> 40 for 10. And, the next, and the next day in pain, he came out and beat Roger, didn't he? Yeah. Nadal. I've got to say, that semi-final is still the best match I've seen here. It was just one of those matches where the, the quality of the match never dropped off at any stage and over five and a bit hours that's something Old legs haven't come into play yet. He's awfully fit, isn't he? Federer showing no signs of his athleticism, uh, athleticism, deserting him yet. Moving like he was this past decade. We talked earlier, Fitzy, about the fact that he's been out there for seven hours and 38 minutes before tonight. Nadal, 12 hours and 51 minutes. So there's a massive differential there. Roger's entitled to be feeling fresh coming in here because remember, he didn't even walk out onto the court in the second round. Andreas Beck having to pull out with injury. Oh. just makes you play extraordinary Fitzy. points to win them. That would have been an ace against most players, and it came back with interest, that return. Incredible return of serve from Nadal to get him into this point. one 
15 probably, good, good. probably not the right ball to go for there. I'm not sure about the conviction there from Federer on that point. He just seemed to slap that one a little bit. Gee, it's a dangerous time. We're going down a well-worn path. 15.30. More often than not, Rogers come up with a big serve. Trouble. He just can't penetrate, can he? Wants to, wants to attack the net, finish the point quickly, but it's very difficult to get the perfect approach against Nadal. That had great depth, but still not good enough. I know the game scores level at the moment, but this has got the feel of a match that's about to break. Boy, did that have some work on it. Well, they're the outer limits that Federer needs to play at at the moment. Still a break point. Burst there, sitting behind Paul Lanacone. <laughs> Marketing manager for Rolex. And a great player. Reached number 12 in the world, Arno Bursch. He was a terrific player, the Frenchman. Well, for a minute there, it looked like time might be running out for Roger. But, as usual, <laughs> when his back is to the wall, that's when... It, He's at his best. Well, he's living on the edge, no doubt about that. Nadal pushing him relentlessly to stay with him. It's turning out to be a question of who's going to be more affected by all of these unconverted break points. Federer finds a way again. In these days of the power game, that is a very low number for a quick serve for a top player when you consider that Serena Williams has got one down at 191 in these <laughs> championships. Mind you. She's not here, and Rafa still is. <laughs> yeah, the right choice there. Nadal deep in the court, and Federer well inside the baseline there. 30 30 minutes. Minutes. And you'd rather Rafa running forward to hit some form of a touch shot, whether it be a lob or a, or a you know, little chip across court. You'd rather him in that position than getting a full swing at one of his ground strokes, especially the forehand. So if possible, bring him forward, but it's just so hard to get into a position to do it. Playing a good game here, Roger, isn't he? Wow, take that. And that was a first serve at 171, not huge, but so accurate down the middle. You'd think at least he'd get a volley, wouldn't you? 
137 on the way back. Two for Federer. That is outrageous. He's just missed it. He's going to challenge it. How did he do that? How did he keep on getting that ball back into play? Amazing defensive skills, hasn't he? And he's missed it by five millimetres. Yeah. How about the shot making also from Federer? The defensive skills of Nadal and the genius of Federer there to come up with so much variety. to another level. Yeah, are we going there? I was, you beat me to it, Peter. Are we going to another level? It looks like it. <laughs> that backhand Nadal hit there, gee, that was good too. I mean, Federer, you, you would have thought you had him off balance, Nadal, but there was the strength of the man just to rip that backhand across court and make Federer come up with that amazing little drop shot. Little window of opportunity then for the four-time champion. He was in the point, Federer. There wasn't he. When you get the upper hand in the point, you need to make sure of it against Nadal. It doesn't happen all the time. Been hitting the backhand well, and the one across court's been serving him well too tonight, but just catching the tape. Just jammed him up enough with that serve, didn't he? Didn't quite get it in the hitting zone. Well, that's what you have to do to, to win a point. You have to hit an amazing slice off the serve across court near the line, <laughs> and then pound the backhand back up the opposite <laughs> line <laughs> within about, I don't know, a third of a metre, less, and hit it like a rocket. That gets a winner. So that's all you have to do to hit a winner. <laughs> yeah. It's extraordinary. And you have to do it for about 150 points in a match.
chance for Federer. He's been patient, Peter. He's needed to lead because most of the chances have been against him. It's been a while since he's had a break point on Rafael Nadal's serve. It was actually in the seventh game of the third set. the best time possible to get that break. I think the right shot. I mean, and he wants to get the forehand. He played the backhand beautifully to get the forehand on the next shot. Maybe he needed to be a fraction further up in the court. But, gee, that missed by a whisker. And Nadal relieved. <laughs> and so is his support box. <laughs> so well both ways Nadal which way do you cover you get the ball back pretty deep but it is to his weapon and where do you cover do you go for cover the hook or do you cover the off forehand it's amazing technique isn't it has come up with several big holds and now Rafa comes up with one of his own in the eighth game of the fourth set and now there is going to be enormous pressure on the Federer serve here this might be a time for Rafa just to have a bit of a free swing at a few if he can get it to 5-4 then the final is within sight and that's why the world's media are here to capture the moment is the moment about to arrive After all of that, he misses with one down the line by a matter of centimetres. This is extraordinary tennis by anybody's standards. It just brings a, a smile to your face, doesn't it? I mean, the, the, the work ethic, ethic and the effort, athletic ability and the shot making. So many times he's been forced to call upon all of his defensive skills, all of his brilliance to get himself out of perilous situations in the third set and again in the fourth set. He can't afford to do it here. Oh. 30, 30, 30. 30. About as good a second serve as you could hit. Amazing return. There it is. Federer goes out wide of the tram line, rips an amazing backhand across court, but leaves the court open. Enough for that winner. 
Awesome heading. speculated about whether this might be a good time to open the shoulders and go for it. It might very well turn out to be 30, 30, 30. a break point to get within one game of reaching the final in Melbourne. That's now 15 break points that Rafa has had. And he's taken advantage of five of them. Well, the tennis in this fourth set has been outstanding. Both of them playing above what they have in the previous three sets, I, I think, in my opinion. It's interesting. Nadal just having a feel for that right ankle. Just have to, they're hitting the ball so close to the line now, seeing it like a football. Incredible shot, that one. And it comes back. It's a joke. change up there Federer and the game point slower Thank serve you. try and create a, a miss hit maybe from Nadal to no avail It just keeps getting better. He was five metres behind the baseline when he hit that. Just extraordinary. Well, that Tony's up. Yeah, it got him out of his seat because that forehand was awfully good. Thank you. From Federer and uh, even better from Nadal. Break point again. challenge but I think he might know the result half-heartedly they walk towards the chair Hawkeye will tell the tale Roger knows doesn't he and finally the immovable object has been moved and Rafael Nadal is within one game of the 2012 Australian Open final Always a relief when you're serving for the match. You get the first point. Get your nose in front. Nadal will take strength from that. Luca can't look.
Well, I like the versatility there of uh, Federer getting around and just threatening on the forehand. I mean, I think it's a good move against Nadal, really. You know he's going to roll that second serve in out there 99% of the time. Well, going out blazing is Federer. Gee, Tony's fight up. He's been up and down like the elevators at Rod Laver Arena tonight, and with good reason. But for most of the match, his nephew has looked the man most likely. Thank you. Thank you. yet Federer, you know, he's down 40-30, but he had two forehands that he could have made. And half a metre shorter on that backhand. It's a fine line. Great effort from Nadal to get into this position. Gee, he's worked hard. And you have to give him credit if he serves it out here. Their 27th meeting has yet a, again been a meeting to savour. That ball was travelling in slow motion towards an open part of the court. How hard is it to win a point? It's nearly impossible. Federer hit four or five outstanding balls there and nearly lost it. talk about the pressure of serving for the match and how much different it is to any other game at any stage of the match. Even Rafa starting to feel it. Break back point to level up at 5-all. Can you believe that? I think Agatha Christie has had some hand in the script. Well, the you know, in terms of attacking tennis and defensive tennis, this is extraordinary. What a lob from Nadal. He looked gone for all money there in Federer. I bet you just can't believe it. He thought he was back in the match there. Thank you. Oh, he's 
Lions getting some depth on those returns now. He knows he has to. It's do or die. A second opportunity then for this man to break straight back and level. He had a crack, didn't he? He put the serve in the slot there for the Federer back end. a good serve from Nadal. He went the other way than the way Federer was expecting. And it brings up a second match point. The champion of 2009 in Melbourne with the opportunity of going all the way to the big one again. Great modern day rivalries produces yet another epic clash. Nadal emerges on top once more and is on the way to the final in Melbourne in 2012. Three hours and 42 minutes. The crowd are on their feet. Uncle Tony is on his feet as he has been several times tonight. It's going to be Nadal against either Djokovic or Murray for the title in Melbourne. John Fitzgerald, what an enjoyable match. But then again, we always say that when those two are out there. Gee, it's a privilege. Listen to the reception here. four-time champion will not join Roy Emerson as the only man to have won five Australian Opens but he'll be back Rafael Nadal wins in three hours and 42 minutes 6-7-6-2-7-6-6-4 in a match that will be talked about for a long time and just continues one of the great rivalries in modern day sport yeah, look, an absolute privilege to see it. You know, we're here live. You you expect so much of these guys. But tonight, you know, there were stages when it went to another level, you know, at the end there. Even in the last game, Peter, you know, you the, the standard was maintained and, and the exceptional shot making and then the retrieval skills. That's how good you've got to be to be the best in this sport on the planet. And uh, these two have been there for... You know, five, six years now together. A bit longer probably for Roger. But uh, really something to watch and uh, something you can, you can savour. Well, Rafa, a special night for all of us to get to see this great rivalry in, in action again. Um, boy, the third set. You were down to break a serve. How did you get out of that against the great Roger Federer? 
Well, I was a little bit lucky that I had the, the break back at the, the next game. No, uh, that's true. I had a big mistake at the beginning of the of the third with that love 30. I, I had a couple of mistakes there, and after Roger started to play much better, and uh, I was lucky in that game. Uh, that was a very very important game on on the match because if I lose the second set, the third set, probably he plays uh, more and more aggressive, and it's always impossible to stop him. Well, you were almost impossible to stop at 6-1 in the tiebreak. 6-1 in the third set tiebreak, and then it got complicated. What were you thinking at 6-5? <laughs> Please win the point. <laughs> That's all. I was very, very nervous at the moment. No, I, losing four uh, set points in a row is, is tough in a tiebreak, and especially when you, when you play probably with, with the greatest of the history between him and Rod Laver. So it's, it's just um, always a pleasure to be here in this court. Thank you very much, all the crowd, to supporting here, to support the, to support the event. Uh, for me, it's a, it's a really honor play against against Roger. It's uh, another, I think, fantastic match. So very, very happy. I, I wish him all the best for the rest of the season because he deserves. We'll talk a little bit, if you would, about what the rivalry with, with Roger has meant to your career. Um, it's been incredible for us to witness. What's it been like to be a participant with him? It's just amazing, no? And it's, it's fantastic to have one player in front of you that you saw him uh, without mistakes, having a totally complete game. So the only thing that I did all my career is try to, to keep learning, no? Because I always saw in front of me one player better than me. <laughs> That's very kind. You. You started the tournament with a little bit of a scare. You started with your, your knee was a problem just before the tournament. Can you believe that you've gotten through that to get through into the finals now again? If you tell me that uh, two Sundays ago, uh, I really can, cannot imagine. No? So it's, it's, for me, it's a dream to be back here in a, in a final of Australian Open. It's one of the favorite tournaments of the, of the year, I think, for all the players because the organization is probably one of the best of the on tour. So thank you very much, everybody, to support the, the players like this. Well, you have two days off now. You get some extra rest. There's another fantastic semifinal tomorrow night with Novak Djokovic and, and Andy Murray. What, what are the keys to the match for those guys? Play, play analyst. Let me know what, what you think they need to do against each other. What would you be looking for? I think both players are playing uh, fantastic. Novak is coming here with uh, you know, after winning the last two Grand Slams, being number one of the world and playing like this, uh, fabulous match yesterday is against uh, David Ferrer, so he's coming with big confidence. And probably Novak, uh, he knows how, how he has to play. He has to play aggressive. He's playing with no mistakes. No? He's playing changing directions very, very easy and seems he's very solid. And in my opinion, Andy, if he wants to, to win that match, I think he has to play more aggressive than, than usual, and that's what... <laughs> That's my advice, but my advice probably is not worked very well because I lost the last six times against him. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to find out pretty soon who's going to be on the other side of you. You're going for your 11th major championship on Sunday night. Congratulations. Fantastic effort tonight. What a pleasure. Rafael Nadal, thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. What a great sportsman he is. At 25 years of age, Rafael Nadal is through to the final in Melbourne where he is looking to add to his championship from 2009. Who will it be? Will it be Novak Djokovic or will it be Andy Murray? We'll find out tomorrow night. He salutes the crowd, the crowd salutes him, and they salute Roger Federer even though he's long gone into the locker room. After what was a gripping contest, three hours and 42 minutes, it goes to four sets. Nobody would have been upset with the possible exception of Rafa had it gone to five. But it was just so absorbing. And as John Fitzgerald said in his commentary, it went up another level and it was of the highest quality, especially in that fourth set. Federer kept on trying to go back to the defensive wall. Eventually that wall cracked and Nadal goes through in Melbourne.